Our iPhones and iPads are often the target of people with bad intentions for our data. In this video, I am going to show you several features that you can enable in order to better protect your data and your privacy. Some of these features are already built in to the iPhone and iPad, other features you would have to pay for. So without further ado, let's get started. One of the first features is a feature that's a couple of years old, but it's called App Tracking Transparency. And it allows you to see which apps are tracking you across websites. And it's pretty simple to access. The first thing you wanna do is open settings. You wanna scroll all the way down to privacy and security and then you want to tap on tracking. And here is where you can see the list of all of your currently installed apps that would basically track you from the app itself to any website to use on this phone. And if you decide to disable this, all you need to do is disable the toggle that reads allow apps to request to track. If you turn that off, then any app that would allow users to give them permission to track them from website to website or app to website or whatever. Turning this toggle off will give all of those apps a default no. If you've ever opened an email, chances are you are being tracked by the sender of that email. And this is used to measure engagement with any advertisement that the company that sent you the email wants to keep track of. And with the default mail app, there is a little known feature that allows you to prevent sending your activity in terms of that email to the sender. And it's called mail privacy protection. In order to enable it, you wanna open settings again. So this is going to be a common thing for all of these steps. Open settings scroll down to mail and you want to scroll down to the section that reads messages. Right in the middle, you will see privacy protection. You want to tap on that and then you want to make sure that toggle is enabled. This is going to prevent all of the advertisers from watching your mail activity. If you open that email, if you delete it, or if you click on one of the links. App permissions are one of the most useful slash annoying things smartphone users have to deal with. So if you want to keep track of all of your app's different privacy permissions, you wanna open settings, you want to tap on privacy and security, and then you want to tap on the item that you want to keep track of. So with iOS, there is a long list of data points that apps can have access to and they have to request that access. So that's the great thing. And even on Android, that is also a rule as well. For example, want to control which apps have access to your camera, you tap on camera, and then you can see all of the applications that would have access to the camera. And from here you can disable or enable any permissions. This would apply to any of the previously listed items in the privacy and security section. And this is going to be very useful in case you find that an app that maybe you wouldn't expect to have access to your health information has access to that. And that is more common than you think. Stolen device protection is the most useful feature Apple has implemented in a very long time. What this feature allows you to do, in the event your iPhone gets stolen, then you would be able to prevent the thief from accessing your Apple ID information and changing the password and stealing your data that way. Up until iOS 17.4, this feature only worked when you were away from your home or away from work or any other places that you that you frequently visited. With 17.4, there is a new option to enable this all the time. In order to do that, you want to make sure your iPhone is updated to iOS 17.4. 
You want to open settings. You want to tap on face ID and password. If you have a touch ID phone, it would read touch ID and password. And you want to type your password in. And from here, you can scroll down until you see stolen device protection. Tap on that. And then you want to select always. If you select always, then this feature is going to be enabled no matter where you are. And in the event that you get your iPhone stolen, whether it's at home, at the gym, at work, then you would be able to prevent the thief from changing your Apple ID password and wreaking all sorts of havoc on your digital life. The last feature is called Private Relay, and it's a part of the iCloud Plus subscription. So you would have to subscribe to iCloud Plus in order to get this. But what this does is it actually allows you to spoof that you are in a different location, similar to a VPN, but not quite a VPN. So you wanna keep that in mind. And this would have websites think that you are in Minnesota, for example, but you are actually in Florida. So if you already have iCloud Plus and you want to enable this feature, it's really simple to do. You want to open settings. You want to tap in your name at the very top, and then you want to tap on iCloud. If you scroll up, you will see iCloud Plus. And under iCloud Plus, there are a couple of different items here, and you want to tap on Private Relay. Here, you will get a blurb of what Private Relay does and enable it or disable it. And if you want to consider where your IP will be, you can tap on IP address location and you have two choices. You can either maintain your general location or use your country's location and the time zone. The one thing you want to keep in mind with this feature especially if you shop at places like Target. If you go to Target's website or at Best Buy or any retailer, website will actually give you the nearest store that it thinks you are in. So in our previous example, if you are spoofing your IP address so that you are in Minnesota, but are actually in Florida, that website will show you the stores in Minnesota instead of Florida. So you definitely want to keep that in mind, especially if you are purchasing an item that you want to pick up. You have to make sure that you change the location on the website rather than turn off Private Relay. And that's it. Those are some of the best features you can use in order to protect your data and your privacy. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.